Telc, angol nyelvvizsga gyakorló feladatok, akadémiai kiadó, 2008. Certificate in English, Test 1, Listening Comprehension, Part 1. You are going to hear five dancers talking about their careers. You will hear each statement only once. After you have listened to each person, decide whether the statements are true, plus, or not true, minus. Now you will have about half a minute to read the five sentences. I was born in Cardiff in 1947. I have always wanted to be a professional dancer, as my grandmother was a famous dancer too. My classmates made fun of me as I didn't want to play rugby with them. I went to the theatre to see ballets instead. When I was 16, I went to Sadler's Wells Ballet School and I became a soloist in 1973, dancing all the leading roles. I love my job very much. I was brought up in Bath and after school I went to Sadler's Wells to learn to dance. After training I was very lucky as the Royal Northern Ballet offered me a position. I stayed there for four years. Then I had a knee injury so I decided to become a choreographer. I went to Benesh Institute and graduated from there. I often work overseas as well. I come from Barcelona in Spain. I began dancing at the age of nine. When I was 16, I won a prize, the Prix de Lausanne, and it was like a dream come true as I was given a scholarship to join the Royal Ballet School. It was great to dance with world-famous dancers. I've now joined the Sadlers well, and I hope to stay with them for a long time. I can become a first artist and a soloist. I would like to be able to dance the Sugar Plum Fairy in the Nutcracker. That's my main ambition. I'm Italian, but I went to learn dancing at Sadler's Well in 1984, after I won the Prix de Lausanne. In 1987, I became a soloist. I've danced in Swan Lake, The Sleeping Beauty, Romeo and Juliet. I've danced all over the world, but I'm very proud as I was voted the Dancer of the Year in 1994. It was a fantastic feeling. I come from Africa, but originally I was trained in London. I joined the Festival Ballet in 1962. I danced all over the world with the biggest companies. Now I am assistant director of the company and I am very busy as an administrator. I have danced all over classical roles, but I have retired now as a dancer. I have a lot of nice memories. Listening Comprehension, Part 2 You are going to hear a radio programme on Mills. Mr Taylor will speak about Mills. First read the sentences below. You will have two minutes for this. Then listen to the radio programme. While you listen, mark whether the sentences are true, plus, or not true, minus, on the answer sheet. After that, you will hear the radio program again. Now read the sentences 46 to 55. Maybe our listeners know that East Anglia is the best region to see windmills, but you can find several other types of mills which are open to the public. In the studio, we have invited Mr Taylor, who has already written a lot of articles for newspapers on the need to restore mills. He is planning to write a book on architecture in the countryside, Mr Taylor, when did you first get interested in mills? To tell you the truth, I can't tell you exactly. I moved to the east part of the country 20 years ago, but at the beginning I didn't have too much time. I had to travel a lot because of my work. After I'd been living here for about four years, I began to take an interest in the local buildings, the castles, churches, etc. During my travels, I saw a lot of windmills and water mills. First of all, could you tell us something about water mills? When did people begin to use them for grinding corn? Well, man has been grinding corn for thousands of years, but we don't know exactly when they first used water to power mills. The only thing we do know is that the Greeks and the Romans used water mills about 2,000 years ago. What kind of evidence have we got? 2,000 years ago there was an engineer in Italy called Vitruvius, who wrote the description of a watermill and how it operated. 
it is amazing that the method of its operation is almost the same as we have been using in our water mills since then. People usually think that mills are used for grinding corn to make flour. Were they used for other things too? Yes, of course. The word mill is also used to mean factory, particularly after the 18th century. Water mills were used to provide power for many industries, such as textile manufacture or mining. But most of the mills were used to make flour until that time. In those days, there were a lot of water mills all over the country. Some of them were situated by the sea. They took their water supply from the sea, didn't they? Yes, that's right. The biggest problem was that the miller could only use them when the tide had filled up the water pools. So the miller couldn't work when he wanted. His working hours depended on the tides. Sometimes it took more than six hours to use up all the water that the tide had brought into the mill ponds and the miller had to wait until the sea filled them up again. Are there many tide mills left? Unfortunately, there are only a few left. Well, let's get back to windmills. There is more and more interest in wind power nowadays. I have heard that several windmills are used to produce electricity in some parts of our country. Is it true? Yes, it's true. Our country is a windy country, so we should be able to produce a lot more electricity using windmills. In the past, wind power was used mainly for making flour or pumping water. These mills are prettier than the modern ones. I read in one of your articles that there are three types of windmills. Could you explain to us the difference between them? Yes, certainly. The earliest one was called post mills. They were made of wood and consisted of a box that was supported by a big vertical post. Then a few years later, somebody came up with a new design. The sails could then be moved into the direction of the wind. What about the other mills? If the body of the mill was made of wood, they were called smock mills. It's a sort of long shirt. If its body was made from brick or stone, they were known as tower mills. Thank you for the interview. It was fascinating to talk with you. We could learn a lot of interesting facts about mills. Listening Comprehension, Part 3 You are going to hear five people in five different situations. Read the statements, listen to the text, and then decide whether the answer is yes, plus, or no, minus, and mark it on your answer sheet. You will hear each text twice. I had to bring this paint back because as soon as I opened the tin, I began to sneeze and cough. I seemed to be allergic to it. It's not the fault of the paint, it's me. In the summer, I have a running nose, itching eyes, but I'm afraid that if it goes on the walls, I'll be sneezing and coughing all the time. Could you give me some other sort? No more trains till eight o'clock. But I thought the service was every hour. I'm sure there was one at six o'clock. There must be one at six. I can't believe it. Could you show me the right timetable, please? Look at mine in the front garden. You can see what a lovely colour they are. I put the bulbs in at the end of September, and now it is April. I'm always delighted in them. It's tiring to plant them, but it's worth it. My garden is so beautiful every summer. I'm sure the weather is getting warmer and warmer. Do you mean today? No, over the years. There used to be snow in April or even in May some years ago. Now it hardly snows at all, even in winter when children could enjoy it. Yes, that's true. Global warming is a big problem nowadays. Well, in my opinion, there are various things you have to take into consideration when you're moving house. Of course, there's a limit to what you can afford, but how can you get the best value for your money? There is slight difference between cheap and expensive houses. Some people are forced to buy a house of certain size in a certain area. Sometimes it can be wiser to rent a house for a while. Test 2. Listening Comprehension, Part 1. You are going to hear five holidaymakers talking about their holidays in North America. You will hear each statement only once. After you have listened to each person, decide whether the statements are true, plus, or not true, minus. Now you will have about half a minute to read the five sentences. Oh, it was terrible. We love New York with all the sight. We went to Niagara Falls. We had always wanted to see that. I know that I put my bags on the coach. 
I remember doing it then going and sitting in the back seat. The journey was gorgeous, but when we arrived in Philadelphia, we found the bags gone. We didn't know what to do. We were rather disappointed. We were travelling through New England. It was wonderful in autumn. It was difficult to understand people there, as they spoke with a strange accent. We stopped for tea in a lovely small town where the buildings were built in the 18th century. We met a lady whose family came from the same village as mine. We stopped in Quebec for a short sightseeing. We were in the old town where the streets are still covered by cobbles. Well, it was difficult to walk and I sprained my ankle. It was awful. I had terrible pain in my ankle. We had to stop and later I was taken to hospital. It was our first day in San Diego. We were staying at the White Horse Inn. We were relaxing and doing nothing. There was a nice bridge, so we decided to go for a walk and take some photos. We asked a man if he would photograph us. He said yes, and then he kept backing up and backing up. Suddenly, he turned around and ran off with our camera. We couldn't believe our eyes. We were very sad. Well, it was dreadful. The hotel was like a prison camp. What a lovely place for a holiday. We complained at the receptionist's desk, but they refused to move us to another room. So we went out for a meal. The area is famous for its shellfish. An hour later, my wife was down with salmonella poisoning, and I went down with heat stroke. We spent the whole holiday in our room, so we didn't get to see any sights. Listening Comprehension, Part 2 You are going to hear a weather forecast. First, read the sentences below. You will have two minutes for this. Then listen to the weather forecast. While you listen, mark whether the sentences are true, plus, or not true, minus, on the answer sheet. After that, you will hear the weather forecast again. Now read the sentences 46 to 55. And now for the weather forecast by Jane Smith. Good afternoon. It looks like the weekend is going to stay cloudy. There will be some rain in some places, but some warm sunshine will appear. For today's weather, let's look at Wales and England, first of all. As I have already said, it will be fairly cloudy and dry, although there will be some variations. There will be some sunshine today, mainly in the south, and we are likely to see the highest temperatures in the southeast. In a few places, it may get as high as 24 degrees Celsius. Although it is sunny now, in my opinion, you will probably find that it turns quite cloudy at some time in the afternoon. On the other hand, there are some places that have been rather dull this morning that will brighten up later in the day. The clouds should break up over northwest Wales now, bringing sunshine and higher temperatures. Northwest England is likely to stay cloudy and may even get drizzled, too. Temperatures only reach 13 degrees Celsius, while across England and Wales it will be 18 degrees Celsius with light winds. It should feel quite warm for most of us. Tonight over Wales and England it will remain cloudy and dry and several places with a little chance of a shower or two in southeast England and east Anglia. The lowest temperatures will be around 10 degrees Celsius, so don't forget to take your jacket with you. And finally, let's go on to Scotland and Northern Ireland. It is the same, really. A lot of clouds everywhere, but there will be some sunshine, and in some parts of eastern Scotland, the temperature may reach 18 degrees Celsius. In the northerly parts of the British Isles, the temperature will be about 14 degrees Celsius. There is a chance of misty patches and a little rain on the western and northern coast of Scotland. Light winds will blow from west to north. Tonight staying dry, the lowest temperature will be around 7 degrees Celsius. And here is the weather forecast for tomorrow and Monday. It will vary from place to place, but generally it will be dry with some sunshine and light wind. That's all for now. Thank you for your attention. Back to Leslie Taylor. Listening Comprehension, Part 3. You are going to hear five people in five different situations. Read the statements, listen to the text, and then decide whether the answer is yes, plus, or no, minus and mark it on your answer sheet. You will hear each text twice. A theater had to cancel a matinee of Sleeping Beauty because the heroine caught a cold. She had to stay in bed for a few days. 
A full house of 250, including 170 children, went home disappointed. The marketing manager said they would plan to put on an extra matinee for all the children. And here is our next contestant, Jane Seymour from Chester. She's 28 years old and works as a secretary at a company in Chester. She's unmarried, but she has a boyfriend. Tonight, she gets the chance to answer our questions to win our prize. And this week, our prize is a holiday for two in the Bahamas. Thanks for calling us. Here is the weather forecast for today, Wednesday the 14th of April. Today will be cloudy, but there is little chance of rain. It will be near freezing all day with icy patches on the roads, so be very careful if you are driving. The temperature will be as low as minus 4 degrees Celsius. There will be frost and snow at the weekend. You can eat a light meal at noon or in the evening. You can choose. You should eat fruit or yogurt. It is important to weigh your food. Quite often you put on weight because you eat too much rather than you eat the wrong foods. Don't add salt to your meals. Try to use low-calorie dressing on your salads. Last night, four people were rescued from their blazing home by brave firemen. The fire brigade was alerted by one of their neighbours who noticed the flames. A faulty electric heater started the fire. Nobody was hurt, but four people were taken to hospital and are being kept overnight for observation. Test 3. Listening Comprehension, Part 1. You are going to hear five people talking about their personal opinion of reading e-books, books on the internet. You will hear each statement only once. After you have listened to each person, decide whether the statements are true, plus, or not true, minus. Now you will have about half a minute to read the five sentences. I must agree with the majority of people that there isn't anything that compares to snuggling up with a good book and reading for hours. If a computer is the only place that is available, that is okay, but I would never be able to give up my library of books and the real thing itself. E-books are great, and a pocket PC is very handy. I wish I could afford the changes that go with a pocket PC, but a computer is more than enough upkeep right now. I read almost exclusively on my pocket PC and prefer it now to old-fashioned paper books. E-books are wonderful. It is much easier to use. If I want to refresh my memory about some details which I had read earlier, I can make use of the word. I agree with others completely about paper book reading, although it's possible to get copies of stories long out of print in e-book form. So I guess I'm a bit undecided on this one. Thank goodness we have the choice of both. I've downloaded a few books off of the Gutenberg Project website, as most of them are out of print. However, I find them unfriendly in that it's a pain to sit at my computer to read them. So I end up printing, printing them out and putting them in a folder. I just like the smell and feel of pages, as well as the ability to put notes in the margins. Listening Comprehension, Part 2. You are going to hear a radio interview. First read the sentences below. You will have two minutes for this. Then listen to the radio interview. While you listen, mark whether the sentences are true, plus, or not true, minus, on the answer sheet. After that, you will hear the radio program again. Now read the sentences 46 to 55. I'm Mark Brown. In our present program, we would like to help people looking for a job who might have a job interview soon. How can we prepare in advance? What should we do to be well prepared? It would be good to have some good advice. Mr Robert Joyce has recently written a book, How to Win at Interviews, with this purpose. I think, Mr Joyce, your book can help a lot, can't it? Yes, certainly. My primary purpose was to help people seeking employment and those who would like to get the job they want. In my book, I've tried to include all aspects of verbal and non-verbal communication to ensure that you're equipped to sell yourself effectively. How to deal with interview questions is dealt with in detail, including a deep analysis of the tricky questions that you may face. Let's talk about difficult questions first. There is an almost infinite range of possible questions you might get asked. Difficult questions can be divided into three main areas. Role-related questions, 
Here you have the opportunity to answer questions in a way that gives you a good opportunity to mention your major strengths in relation to the vacancy. Personal questions? You should answer these questions so that you are providing information about your experience and skills that are directly relevant to the position. Dangerous questions. If any of these questions is not answered carefully, your application may fail. It is important to understand how to answer the direct objections that the interviewer may raise. Expecting difficult questions and having pre-prepared answers can significantly improve your performance and help you to stand out as a star candidate. Understanding the logical basis of how to approach such questions will help you become more confident at dealing with any difficult questions. Could you give us an example? Yes, with pleasure. Here is a common example of a role-related difficult question. What interests you most about this job? Answering this question properly requires that you fully understand the job description and by asking plenty of questions, you should then be able to respond with some specific explanations that show your enthusiasm. The second type of difficult questions are the personal questions. For example, do you consider yourself a natural leader? The ideal answer to this is yes, but in reality, not all of us possess the confidence required to lead. You can substitute natural with either competent or conscientious. Most professional jobs require an element of leadership that you should be taking the trouble to cultivate, whether it comes naturally or not. The most general one is the next, tell me about yourself. This can be a frustratingly open question, but it does give you an excellent opportunity to communicate your skills and experience. Aim to keep your answer professionally orientated, specific to the characteristics that the interviewer may want to hear. And finally, here are two of the dangerous questions. What did you dislike about your last job? Ideally, you would answer, there was nothing I disliked, although this may not be realistic. But avoid criticising former colleagues or managers. Why were you fired? This is also a frequent dangerous question. If, however, you were fired and it was not a redundancy, then it is advisable to be open and honest whilst minimising the reason for your dismissal. It is, however, a good idea to make peace with your former employers and ask them to at least give you a fair reference. Thank you very much, Mr Joyce. That was very interesting, and I think I can say very helpful. I'm sure everybody who needs it will find some good advice for their interviews. Listening Comprehension, Part 3 You are going to hear five short texts. Read the statements, listen to the text and then decide whether the answer is yes, plus, or no, minus, and mark it on your answer sheet. You will hear each text twice. Hello Mary, this is James. I'm just ringing to tell you that I won't be able to get to your place in time to pick you up. Could you please come and meet me outside the theatre just before seven? This is an announcement for flight BA220. We'd like to inform our passengers that flight BA-220 to New York will be delayed approximately 30 minutes due to the bad weather. We apologize for the delay. I am terribly sorry, John, but I can't go out with you this evening. I am unwell. I have a headache and I feel dizzy. I think I should see a doctor, but the surgery hours have finished. Could you please get me some medicine from the chemists? It's lucky I was passing. I don't think it's possible to repair your car here... We'd better find a mechanic in the next village. I know a garage not far from here. I'll give you a lift there. I can recommend you several tourist guides on Scotland. We have one with good road maps and street maps of larger towns, and there is one with ideas for tours and details on places of interest. But if I were you, I would buy this one which has symbols for national heritage sites. You could visit beautiful historical spots. Test 4. Listening Comprehension, Part 1. You are going to hear five people talking about ghosts. You will hear each statement only once. After you have listened to each person, decide whether the statements are true plus or not true minus. Now you will have about half a minute to read the five sentences. Do ghosts exist? People have been asking if ghosts really exist for ages. But how do we know that ghosts exist? Seeing a ghost 
When you think you see a ghost, how can you tell whether it really is a ghost or not? People who will believe anything without any evidence are dangerous. Don't believe everything you hear, or read for that matter. This is common sense. We should all be skeptics to some degree. About five years ago, I went on a ghost research expedition in the woods with a small group. On that trip, I wandered away from the crowd for a few minutes to do my own exploring. And as I turned the corner of a trail, I suddenly saw Elvis and the Loch Ness Monster dancing with each other in the woods. You don't believe me? That's good, because it didn't happen. I have read a very strange story. A school had to close because of evil spirits. I wonder what would cause that. Could it be the kids influenced by some horror films or some type of mass hysteria caused by gases or chemicals, etc.? Maybe it was the kids themselves just acting out. I hope they have sorted out the problem now. Once I was asked whether ghosts exist or not. I said yes. Although I've never seen one, the reports can't be dismissed. I do believe in ghosts. They can't be just a myth. There are so many films and stories about people who've met or seen them. No, I've never seen one, and neither has anyone else. We all love a good ghost story. No, I don't believe in ghosts. I believe people get themselves so worked up they believe they saw something. But it's great to have a few ghost stories to tell around the campfire or during a power cut. But do you actually believe in ghosts? No way. They're just stories to frighten people. Listening Comprehension, Part 2 You are going to hear two texts. First, read the sentences below. You will have two minutes for this. Then, listen to the texts. While you listen, mark whether the sentences are true plus or not true minus on the answer sheet. After that, you will hear the texts again. Now read the sentences 46 to 55. Vitamins and Minerals Somewhere along the evolutionary line, the human body seems to have lost its ability to create certain materials so important for life that we call them vitamins. You need about 20, as well as a number of essential minerals, to conduct your complex biochemical business. The only one you create by yourself is vitamin D, which is produced by the action of sunshine on the skin. Most people get plenty of vitamins from the food they eat. Yet vitamin tablets are big business and many people take a lot of vitamins. That doesn't matter much in the case of C and B complex vitamins. They are used up rapidly on a daily basis. But vitamins like A, D, E, and K remain stored in the liver or other fatty tissues for weeks or even months. In general, you don't need to take vitamin tablets unless you are pregnant, taking certain antibiotics, are on kidney dialysis, or are either elderly, alcoholic, or just don't eat well. Let's drink water. We are water creatures. After all, life began in the sea. Water makes up about 60% of our body weight, and it serves as a medium of exchange of our most critical physiological functions. It's something we just can't be without. It's also one of the very few materials that exist in all three states, solid, liquid and gas, and it has an enormous ability to take in heat. It takes nearly five times as much energy to raise the temperature of water by one degree Celsius as it does to heat aluminium the same amount. That's why pots and pans on your stove can get too hot to touch even though the water in them is merely warm. This high specific heat helps keep your body temperature stable. Unlike all other compounds, water's solid form is less dense than its liquid form, thus ice cubes and icebergs float. Listening Comprehension Part 3 You are going to hear five people in five different situations. Read the statements, listen to the text, and then decide whether the answer is yes, plus, or no, minus, and mark it on your answer sheet. You will hear each text twice. I have invited the Smiths from next door for drinks on Saturday evening. I think we should get to know them a bit better as we have just moved in. Do you think we should offer them something to eat as well? Shall I make some sandwiches or shall I bake something? I hope you have not suffered too much from the flight because I would like to show you some places in London. First we'll take your luggage to the hotel 
and then we'll start on a sightseeing tour by bus. Let's get a taxi now. You can't find beaches like this in England. Miles and miles of sand. I just love sitting in the sun, drinking some cold juice and watching the incredibly blue sky and sea. We must send a postcard back home to the office and make them all envious. Are you sure you can steer this boat? It looks so big. Although you have the instructions, you never tried it before. I hope you manage as I don't really feel like going for a swim. The Maoris are the original inhabitants of New Zealand. Their ancestors arrived on the island from the central Polynesian islands around 1350. Their wooden sculptures and jade jewelry are one of the most attractive pieces in the Natural History Museum. <laughs> 